we trust God that God is going to help us this evening to be able to do justice to some few things as required. Um, before we advance, just help me appreciate my brother again, Pastor Victor Hugo. Please appreciate, appreciate him. You know, he spoke a lot of things. And, you know, I, I told him that he should just continue for a while. At least let me rest, you know, because I was enjoying, I was enjoying it. Um, I want us to look at some few things today. We just look at some few things this evening and we are done. One of the things I want us to look at, paramount keeping to our spiritual growth. It's very important that any friends of God, you must understand that God has interest in you. It is possible for you to just join a bank wagon of people and come to God. Everybody came to God expecting nothing. Only people that expect something that get something from Him. It's true. The same way when among many of your children, there is one that knows that anytime mommy go out and come back, mommy brings something. That expectation makes you always to always remember that actually I am coming back home. I need to be able to carry something for my child. I get what I'm saying. And that is why the same thing applicable to God. God is our father. And we must always understand that anytime God does business with us, it's because he wants to add up to us. Okay. I thought I want us to look at in keeping to our spiritual good. What is truly spiritual good? What does it mean for somebody to say he's going spiritually? Can you just pray one minute and ask the Lord and say, Father, beyond what I will say, beyond what I will teach, you will hear a voice speak to you beyond my speaking. Jesus speaking, say the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are alive. It means that every word that Jesus Christ speak was not just a word that educated their mind. It was a word that has the ability to activate their spirit and align them to the order of God. Jesus took 12 men, 12 men, 12 of them. They were sufficient enough for him to engineer them to become relevant in day and time. You must always understand that God will always begin with a man. Every family, every, every region, God needs just a man. That man becomes the epicenter and the nexus where many others can be connected. And if God cannot find a man, a thousand of us can be wasted. I assure you. One man is enough for God. The Bible says God has no restraint either to conquer with many or to win with a few. An entire family is a resultant effect of one man. If your husband is not spiritual, you can be spiritual. If your wife is not spiritual, you can be. If your father, your mother are not, you can. Yahweh Elohim, you are the King, and you reign forevermore. Adonai, Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, you are the King, you are the King, and you reign forevermore. Adonai, Adonai, Yahweh Elohim. You are the king, you, you are, are the, the king, king, and you reign forever. E Adonai, Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, you are the king, you, you are, are the, the king, king, and you reign forever. Adonai, Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, you are the King, and you reign forever. Adonai, Adonai, Yahweh Elohim. 
are the King. You are the King. And you are. And you reign forever. You know, many more times we must always understand that God is interested in dealing with us individually. A lot of times we think because we have a friend in church, we believe as much as God is interested in us, He's interested in our friend. It is true, in generic knowledge, that God is interested in everybody, but truly speaking, a lot of times God will always reach out to a hungry heart, a man and a woman that is thirsty and never satisfied with it. There is a kind of level of desperation required for a man to be able to encounter God. No man that ever encountered God in his time encounter him just like that no there must be a zeal guiding you either a zeal for darkness because god will always require a certain level of zeal for him to advance his kingdom as such a man that is neutral will never be able to be encountered by god somehow god either reach out to the wicked of us all or to him that desire to function and advance the affairs of his kingdom somehow by mercy of course you have an encounter where you wherever you are no matter how lazy you are but when the encounter comes, when God has been able to reach out to you, grace will always be required supply to you so that you can always advance. And if you don't know how to utilize the privilege given to you by grace, you may actually remain where you are for a very long time. And this is the challenge. How many of you have been in church for the past 10 years and today they have not received the dividends where which have been promised to them by their pastors? And their pastors let them understand there is an authority in Christ Jesus, but they have not come to that level of authority. So they still sleep and have attack at night. They still see demons come to sleep with them at night. The simple reason was simple because they have not grown spiritually. It's true. Many will believe that spiritual growth is but a cliche. But I assure you, no man does business with God and doesn't get transformed. The Bible says they grow from strength to strength, all of them that appear before God in Zion. That says that anytime you appear before God in Zion, there is a measure that's added unto you. The Bible says, Ye beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. That will tell you that actually, according to the operation of God, it's designed that a man build up himself to a point where he can grow. The reason for build up is so that he can grow. And if the scripture demands that we actually build up ourselves, is because there is such a thing as growth. A building pattern was required to be able to add up to you. And the Bible began speaking also. And the Father said, Paul was the one that said, I am what I am by the grace of God. That grace was not even that I labor more than the all. Why was he laboring? The reason was because he wanted to come into a level of stature and authority. The Bible says, as babes, desire the sincere meek of the gospel, that you may be able to grow unto maturity. The Bible says, an heir, although he's a child, different from, from a slave, although he's put under tutors and mentors so that he can come to the level of sonship and maturity. That's to tell you that there is such a requirement in the kingdom for a man to be able to grow unto maturity. The Bible speaks about John the Baptist. Say, John the Baptist remained in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth. That means to say there was a requirement given to John the Baptist appointed according to time for him to grow spiritually. The same thing the Bible began speaking about Jesus. He said the man Jesus, he grew in favor with men, favor with God, and also grew in stature and in wisdom. That's to tell you that there is what is called growth in the kingdom. I get what I'm saying now. Paul began speaking when there was a dispute between him, Cephas, and Apollos. In keeping to follow the other said they are for Paul, some say they are for Cephas, some say they are for Apollos. And Paul began to let them understand that in this operation, it's not about partisan, it's not about denomination, no. It's about the necessity for you to be able to grow in the pathways of God. And it does not matter whether it's Paul that did a contribution, it's Apollo that did a contribution, or it's Cephas that did a contribution. You must understand that it is God that gives you increase in this pathway. That no matter whatsoever you do, you must come to a point where God has to approve of you and add up another measure of grace to you. I get what I'm saying now. What I'm trying to lay foundation to is that there is such a thing as spiritual growth, even if you don't have an understanding. That it's possible for a man, as a man grow physically, it is also possible for you to grow spiritually. The reason why your pastor do whatever he did today is because he has grown to certain levels spiritually that you have not grown. I get what I'm saying now. Then, what then is spiritual growth? What is spiritual growth? The reason why you don't believe you can cast out devils is because you have not gone to certain extent. The reason why you don't believe you can heal the sick is because you have not gone to certain extent. The reason why you don't believe you can preach the way I'm preaching here now is because you have not gone to certain extent. That's the truth. The reason why I say I prayed on the witches in your village is because you have not gone to certain extent. Do you know 
that this small baby there may believe that she cannot be able to jump from here to that side. Why? Because she has not grown. Give her three, four, five years. You will see the baby jumping everywhere. Why? It's simply because she has grown. In the same way in the realm of the spirit, there are a lot of kind of oppression you cannot be able to keep up to if you have not grown to a certain extent. I get what I'm saying now. By the time you have grown to a certain extent, nature, certain things become natural to you. A man said something very, many years ago, and I wonder, and I say the truth. When you, when you give birth to a dog, when a dog give birth to their baby dogs, they don't teach the baby dog how to bark. As they don't grow naturally, they begin to bark. And I realize that it's only ego that truly teach their children how to, to fly. And the reason why they do that is because the eaglet doesn't want to. So they take them high and they release them so that they can fall. And immediately when they are about falling, suddenly they stretch their wings and they begin to soar. And they are, ah, I never knew that this possibility exists. But until they are pushed beyond certain limits, they wouldn't have done what they do. The same thing with us too. Many times we go through all kinds of situations, all kinds of challenge. God's intention was not to pass us through those things he passed us through. No. The wilderness experience was required for us to grow spiritually. So the devil knows that by the time he continues to attack you every day, you will, be, you will come to a point where you will fall. But God knows that as long as he permits the devil to continue to attack you, you will reach out to him for strength. And as you reach out to him for strength, you begin to pray, you begin to fast. He's going to empower you with the same capacity to be able to defeat the devil. After you're able to defeat the devil, then he leaves the strength with you. I realize that many more times, I become more anointed when I go out for outreaches. Anytime I go out for outreach, I go out to a very dark region where there are witches and wizards. All the attacks come upon me. But the Lord will give me strength to break through. After that, when I return back, I discover that strength remains with me again. Sometimes I'm in the field, as I'm praying for people, suddenly wisdom opens. Sometimes vision opens. Sometimes a healing anointing is turned up. And I found myself doing things that I cannot be able to imagine. But immediately after that was done, I knew that that thing came upon me was because I went for that outreach. Immediately after that process, I returned back and I see that thing still working in my life. And that thing happened because I was put in a situation where I had to be able to utilize the possibility of God for that moment. And that's how you remain with me. God increased my measure simply because I reached out by rich in faith. It is safe that must have to happen in your life. And many more times, there are a lot of times when you begin to see all kinds of attack in your life. Every night you cannot sleep. The reason was not because God wanted them to keep attacking. No. It was because you can rise up in the place of prayer and begin to pray. As you continue to pray, as you are defeating the devil, another thing that God will do to you is that he's adding a measure of grace to ensure that as you're able to defeat the devil, now you are to also add a measure in the spirit. Why do you think that immediately when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus Christ, the Bible said, he led him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The reason was, Jesus Christ cannot be able to cast out a devil that he has not dealt with actually in the wilderness. I get what I'm saying now. You can never be able to cast out a spirit if the spirit has never come to challenge you before. That is why anytime as you are growing in the things of faith, you begin to have all kinds of warfare, all kinds of attack. The reason is that you get acquainted with all kinds of principalities, power, thrones, and dominions, and all kinds of darkness because they exist in the lives of men. And God will ensure that all of those things, you came to a point where you conquer them all. And immediately you are done conquering them. What will not happen? It's simple. Immediately when you are done conquering them, God give you the authority against them. Then, as He give you authority against them, He also authorize you to be able to do that, casting them out in the lives of men. Spiritual growth is a factor of many things. I assure you, in our operations in God, we grow a lot of times by warfare. It will require all kinds of warfare to grow spiritually. So all the attacks at night, all the warfare, all the challenge, all the lack, all the times of pains and perils, we are actually part of the process required for a spiritual growth. There was a woman named Hannah. Hannah has a counterpart, Penina. Penina was the one giving birth to children like no man's business. And every intercourse she had with her husband, a child was born. Penina continued to give birth to children to a point that Hannah was beloved of the husband but her womb was barren what she never understood was that anything that was actually supposed to be divine comes with a lot of kind of oppression by devil anytime the devil knows that God is about to bet a thing what it does is that he comes to attack devil is so careful he says it even enough to discern the movement of God in the region. Devil knows that you will become great tomorrow. 
So he knows that if he can only but ensure that he comes to a point where you deceive you and beguile you to give up on God, he knows that he will deprive you of becoming great tomorrow. So what he does is simple. He comes and promises something that God has already promised to you. So that you can sell your birthright like, like Esau. And instead of becoming the firstborn son, you decide to actually be the last. What Penina did not understand was that actually it was the womb of Hannah that God has destined a prophet. But do you know that it's also part of her requirement for spiritual growth? That for her to grow to certain status, to be able to bet other things, for her to be able to ensure that she pray for other people, they can give birth to a child. She has to also be able to come to a point where herself can conquer the challenge that she's going through. So what did God do? He permitted her to always come to continue to cry. Hannah will always come to the temple. She will appear before God in Shiloh and cry and cry and pray. Everyone came and pray and go back. But she remained. That extra more she began to continue to do was a requirement. God was needing a prophet. Hannah was needing a son. All through the quest she did was a waste of time. But immediately when she let God know that, Father, if you give me this son, I will give you a prophet. God gave her the strength to be able to travel sufficiently well, beyond the understanding of the priest. And a prophet was born by her. One son she gave birth to is more important than all the children of Penina. I don't know how many Penina children you know. <laughs> I don't know how many children of Penina do you know in the Bible. But you know of prophet Samuel. Samuel was a love answer to all the many children that Penina has. That was just because a woman grew spiritually and remained continually praying, remaining consistently, knowing fully well that there's a level she can come in God that she can bear something of eternal relevance. I don't know what favorite thing that is going on in your life because a lot of times the devil always makes us believe that God is a waste of time. And he doesn't even know that him himself is a waste of time also. You know, if you are not careful enough, the devil will bring you to a point that you make you believe that it's an option. The devil is never an option because the devil has never helped anybody. The devil uses you and throw you away. Take any man that has walked with darkness for a very long time, his life is archaic. His life is in pain and peril. Doesn't matter if the devil give you money today, he will collect tomorrow everything plus your life. And he will not be tired, he will start going after your family. You see, a man met me and said, Philip, I'm tired of my life. I want to use one of my sons for ritual. You know, he has many children. So he felt if you use one for ritual and take care of the other ones. He has done something that is just. What he didn't know is that the devil will not collect one son. That one son is a requirement to include him into your family. Yes. <laughs> the devil established covenant. He knew. And that was why our grandparents have idols. You don't even know them. Many of them don't even know their names. Many years ago, many years ago, you are not born. They serve idols. Many of them went and met idols. They went and met some spirit and told them now, make my family to prosper in business. I will give you my life. But you see, what they did to them, they say, okay, take this water and this calabash, drink it. They don't know that, that water and that calabash was supposed to infuse together with all the gene in them. And also fused together with the eggs that they will produce. And as they drink that water and the calabash, it included us into the generation. So they lived and died. But till today, we still see those idols appearing to us at night and telling us, ah, your grandfather actually dedicated you to me. And you wonder how, when? What you don't know is that what most of them, they dedicated the children in their womb and say, I give you myself and my children and my children's children. Devil would always require somebody that would give you entrance in the family. No one that Joshua said, see, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my family, there must be a time in your life that you must sit down and dedicate all this to your children. I'm assuring you. You see, no child is too small to be kept in the Holy Spirit. Because the devil will go after. Why do you think your children are in secret society? <laughs> Those children are not limited. A child, as small as he is, he can have rank in the spirit. No one that small, small children kills big, big people. Spiritual growth is not dependent upon your age. It's in how much more you can align to the spirit. 
That is why this lady has brought you. She can enter second side today. And tomorrow she'll start flying. You wonder how do you fly? It's not about how. It's alignment to the spirit. The same way you can be in God today, and if you can align to the spirit of God very well, He will teach you a technology in the spirit. How you can be able to take advantage of the operations of God and begin to operate like God. I need you to know that it's the intention of God for us to grow into maturity and go on to start right here. But many more times, your spiritual growth is not a thing that will just happen just like that. No, you have to go through a lot of kind of warfare. The lacks you go through is part of the requirement for you to grow. The warfare, the attacks at night, the separation, the betrayers, everything is part of a requirement for growth. Jesus Christ himself needs to be betrayed. He needs to what, be crucified. The Bible said that he had to do that for a crown set before him. A glory yet to be revealed. That there were many things that Jesus Christ did not go to himself cannot be able to come to a point where he can become a spirit that everybody can partake of. Do you, require, do you realize that the same pattern that Jesus Christ went through is the same thing that you are going through? The same process of death, burial, and resurrection, then ascension. If a man must grow spiritually, he must understand the process of his development. Many more times we begin from just giving, being giving birth to. Jesus Christ was giving birth to. But he came to a point where he had to die. After he died, he came to a point where he had to what? Resurrect. After the resurrection, he had to come to a point where he has to ascend. It's the same thing that in your life today you must also understand. That part of your requirement and development for spiritual growth is that you must come to a point about the, that you are not giving birth to the natural like this is good. But you must come to a point where you have to die. Everything about you must be gone. You must come to a point in your life where you have nothing to lose because everything is gone. There was a point, you must come to a point in your life when your life is confused. You don't even know, you don't even know anything about yourself. Like you don't even know where to start from. They ask you, who are you? Say, I don't even know who I am because me, myself, I don't even know. You are born, no? It's not as if you don't exist. You exist. But you don't have a definition, a coordinate for where you are. It's a very good place to start from. That's when God now comes and begin to give you definition. At that time, you need to come back to God that can give life to a man. Then, he begins to make you to live again. At that moment, what you have was actually death. Then, he come and give you another kind of life. After that death, the next step in your life is burial. The time of burial is season where you are so talking in God. It's a time of silence in your life. When all those attacks come, all those warfare came, you apply this why it didn't happen. You apply this why it didn't happen. You met everybody you knew. You have many uncles, many brothers. All of them are very, very well to do. But everybody turn your turn their back on you. And your life looks as though you are buried in the muddy clay. It was a season of burial. You did not only die, but you were buried. Even the people that were supposed to help you live too, they bury you the more. What they never knew was that a seed needs to be buried. Every seed needs to go to the ground and become a very well for you to resurrect. You don't plant a seed by living in open. No. When you want to help a seed, you cover it very well. Allow it to die. Then it begins to grow again. Spiritual growth will begin from your death. Every man that truly really wants to grow spiritually must understand the way of dying. You must die to everything that you think will exist. Forget about your life. Immediately after you die, you are buried, you are covered. Then a power of resurrection begins. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body. That spirit will quicken your mortal body. Jesus Christ himself came to a point where he was gone. He lived a life. He was born. He lived a life. But after he died, everything about him was gone. But the Bible speaks about the agency of the spirit that came upon him. As he was there, a spirit came upon him and it brings him back again alive. It's another level of promotion in the spirit. It's another level of growth. That he came to a point where he become a life-giving spirit by resurrection. You must come to a point that after world you are buried suddenly. The people don't understand how your life begins to live again. They now see you begin to come alive again. And you begin to function with another kind of level of wisdom. Level of strength and ideas. And they wonder. I thought your life was finished. We thought we didn't hear from you again. We thought you are gone. They begin to hear about the things you begin to do. And to be noise abroad. That the man that we thought was once upon a time dead. Now is living again. What happened to him that he has grown now? Another level is added on to him. So you return back to the picture. Is it not small you, Kenneth? Small you. Say no. Immediately when you open your mouth to talk. And they begin to hear about the things you have done. They wonder how 
What they don't know is that you have grown. But your growth was actually, it came to a point where you died. And there was nothing about your God begin to raise you again. It's the power of preservation. Every man that must grow spiritually must understand the power of preservation. Our spiritual growth is independent to how much we are resurrecting God. Because spiritual growth is not adding plus one, plus two. All, all those things are important. But their level of authenticity and potency is in ability to resurrect you again. Resurrection is spiritual growth. is the ability to come alive again after the order of God. How that you were doing business, everything fail and suddenly it begins to rise again. And they wonder how did this thing rise again? It's spiritual growth. Because after the warfare come the victory. Without the warfare, there cannot be the victory. Any man that desire to grow spiritually must understand the way of warfare. In this kingdom, we rise by warfare. There is a kind of warfare apportioned for every man. Every man must learn to fight his warfare. Every man. The Bible speaks, I am giving you the land. But you must rise up and contend and present the land in battle. No man contend for anything without warfare. Take all two scriptures. Everything was contended to by warfare. Everything. And what we saw was a topography of how our life would become. I get what I'm saying. Now. It does not matter whether you are married. Another woman will contend for your husband. You must learn to fight to preserve him. It doesn't matter if you have a good job. Another person is wanting the job too. You must fight to preserve it. Everything you must keep in this life will require warfare. And the more you fight, the more you conquer, the more you remain. There are all kinds of distraction, all kinds of attacks. If you climb car going to Abuja, the devil wants you to die by the road. Because sometimes you see people dying by the road. What is going to tell you that I want you to be next? <laughs> Anytime you hear about burial ceremony, know that actually what the devil wants is that you should be next. Because it's natural for every man to die. So anytime the devil comes against you and he cannot take you, he's surprised. How didn't you die? The oppressions of God are strength, my friend. It will require a certain level of death, burial, and resurrection for you to survive. So spiritual growth is the pivotal requirement for us to try in the kingdom. And everyone that desire. To represent God alive, must understand the ways of the spirit. Spiritual good is how much more compliant and aligned you are to the spirit of God. I remember many years ago, every night some demons used to come to oppress me. I cannot sleep a night without being oppressed. I mean, they will come and press my neck. They will press my neck very well. I will shout and cry. Nobody can say to me, my pastor is not there. I will cry and cry and cry. They will oppress me again. Until one day, I had to laugh, say, Father, why? Is that how I will continue to believe in you and keep dying like that? Because those demons will press my neck very well. When I'm about to die, when it's remaining 0.3 seconds for me, that they will release me. I'll do it. <laughs> they will press it again. And I was handicapped. I will call the name of Jesus. It's not, nothing will happen. One day I felt maybe it's because I'm not putting Bible in my room. So I went out. Every night I would tell my siblings, before you sleep, gather all your Bible and give me. So I will carry their Bibles. I'll put one by the left, one by the right, one by the... I will put Bible as my pillow. While I close my eye at night, those demons will come and sit upon those Bible and be hitting my head like this. And I realize that the Bible does not save me, my friends. Because what is coming after me as spirit, and they read Bible too. I've been this year, you know, quote Bible before. Oh, spirit knows scripture very well. Babalao, I have been to a shrine before, I've seen Bible there. I visit one man and I see Bible in his house. Man and read Bible. So what's the difference? <laughs> it's the life that matters, my friend. I get what I'm saying. Every occultic book has their definition from the Bible. Every occultic book, whether in the monastery, whether three months. I'm telling you, there must be something about the scripture they add inside. Because the scripture is one of the first spiritual books ever written. I'm telling you. The scriptures, magic, everything was traceable to the Bible. 
because it was through the scripture that they saw signs and wonders and everything possible. Then they adumbrated and perverted it because Christianity was actually a move of signs and wonders. But God did not intend it to be like that. He intended for people to know His Spirit, to know the Spirit doing the signs and wonders. Because many people saw what the Spirit did to men and they tried to mimic it. So they looked for all the astral realms of operations and they gave people laws and patterns. And since they cannot be able to align to the spirit that causes that thing to happen, what they did was that they offered sacrifice to strange beasts. And those beasts gave them advantage and they begin to do the thing they do. The thing that will grant you advantage in this kingdom is how much more you grow spiritually. When I was oppressed by devils, one of the things the Lord told me that Philip, in the realm of the spirit that is ranking, and any spirit that is below you can oppress you. He said, where you are, you are in a place where many spirits are below you. Do you know that this is my baby? I don't have to bend down. I can do it like this. I will cross them. If I do like this, I will match them. But somebody is taller than me. If I want to knock him, I have to climb something to knock him. <laughs> it works like that in the realm of the spirit, my friend. In the realm of the spirit, there is rank. There is, there is level. There is level. Anyone that is above you in level can always oppress you. And there are those two kingdoms, light and darkness. It does not matter how. Mind you, every principality, every thrones, every demons of darkness actually was actually a product of light. What made them to become darkness was that the authority of light was taken away from them, but the power still remained with them. Don't worry that the devil has power, but we have authority. And authority in itself constitutes power automatically. When I give you authority, I give you power. When I can give you power, I not give you authority. And when you are breaking power without authority, you are illegitimate. So what the devil does is this. He knows that there is a power given unto him. He continues to utilize it on his own accord. That is why we have all kinds of warfare going on. And the reason for spiritual warfare is to bring us to a place of advantage. Because what we have is what we call warfare of advantage. Because every warfare you conquer, you, you take away a prince within a region, then they promote you. It's like military coup d'etat. Anytime a man in the military, it doesn't matter whether you're a private, if you're able to kill a general, as of that time, you become a general. <laughs> That was how they promoted themselves. Many of these generals you see today, they, were never, they didn't follow through the process to become generals. Many of them, what they did was, and they overthrew the general, they became a general. Because now, they have the military intelligence to think like a general. And think higher than a general. If today Biafra should get their state, many will declare them generals. Why? Because for them to be able to conquer a nation, they have the same capacity like a general. So the reason why you have to go through all kinds of spiritual warfare so that you can be able to conquer many principalities' powers. When you conquer a principality, you are made a principality. When you conquer a power, you are made a power. When you conquer a dominion, you are made a dominion. Every level of operation, when you conquer it, you attend unto it. And that is why if anybody is willing to take you away from your office, he promotes himself to that ground. In the realm of the spirit, promotion comes by warfare. If you are not ready to fight, forget about promotion. You remain where you are. If you want to rise through the ladder, you must conquer them. I know that for the principality, I grow to them. Principality will break by a principle. When you know the principle, you dethrone them. Oh, yeah. That's right. Every principality is called an origin. They don't have an end. They are origin. They, they originate. They set themselves as a statue, as a stronghold. You can come and say today, you are, I, 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 I become your end. I am your omega. Because many principalities are referred to as alpha. And that is why Christ has been made the principal, the head of all principality. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He begins and he ends. And he gave up the same kind of operation. You must understand the operation of Alpha and Omega and left half in your life. And as at any time you approach any kind of darkness oppressing you within your life, you must know that there's a level where we do operate. What you only have to do is to ascend beyond them. You come in the name of Jesus, then you promote yourself to that place. Then you sit together with Christ in that place. And what you don't understand is you'll be afraid of warfare. Why am I being attacked every night? No, grow spiritually. Yeah. As you begin to grow, what was going to happen is simple. You come to a point where you begin to dethrone all of them. As you begin to dethrone them, you set yourself in those high places. Do you know that if a colonel, when you see a major general, he salutes, right? Yes, sir. By default, it doesn't matter his age. Yes, the same thing when a general comes when anyone that is either a staff sergeant or captain see them they will like they will, they will bow it's just by default you must understand that the intention of god is to promote you around in the realm of the spirit there's decoration that happens 
I should remain consistent with God. Aligning to His Spirit, time comes, they continue to elevate you. By default, you begin to find yourself fighting warfare. How does that happen? What will begin to happen is this. They begin to add weapons of war to you. <laughs> they begin to add weapons of war. You become acquainted with how to operate the weapons of the Spirit. There are times you find yourself in certain region fighting kind of warfare. You see yourself killing people. You see yourself appearing in a place where people are really fighting. And you wonder, are they going to fight in Latvia? No, it's not a fight in Latvia. What you happen is that a fight that is going on in the realm of the Spirit. And you are part of it. Sometimes you see yourself fighting together with angels. You find yourself fighting together all kinds of beasts and spirits. What you are doing is that you are promoting yourself in the Spirit. And as you do that, they become your friends. That's what we say about being friends with the immortals. What we mean by being friends with the immortals is that no angels fight together with them. Not that anytime you come, they disappear. No. Ensure that you appear together with them in dreams and in visions. And you are fighting together, you are playing together, eating together. When you do that very well, when you come to a region and stand, they stand together by you. Everyone stands by his friends, my friends. And that's why when somebody insults you, they answer the person. You don't have to talk. <laughs> I know people that don't talk about me and they don't talk against me. They went to sleep. Something came and was attacking them every night. And they will know that it's you that is doing it, but you don't know you are doing it, but your, your friends are doing it. The tones and the operations of God is guided by beings. And these beings will answer you by themselves. God doesn't need to do anything. No one that Jesus said, He said, Do you know I have the power to kill you? He said, No, somebody gave me the power. My kingdom is not of this world. If not, I could have called you just of angels, they will call. It's the same thing. Anytime you touch a song, the system that is backing will fight you. See, go and kill the go and kill the president of the United States of America today. No nation will save you. They will hunt for you anyhow. It's the same way that works in the kingdom. Because in the kingdom, you are legitimized, you are actually associated with certain kind of operations. Anyone that thought you look for trouble. But how could you have that understanding until you grow spiritual? So spiritual growth becomes the sum total of your level of understanding, number one. The sum total of your level of alignment, number two. The sum total of your level of compliance and sacrifice to the spirit of God. Then coming to a point where you have the same mind, the same character, the same nature with the spirit of truth. Spiritual growth is in how much more you are aligned with the spirit of truth. And how much more the character of Christ finds expression in you. Jesus Christ grows spiritually by aligning to the truth. He began from the Torah, joining to the things not written in the Torah, joining to the things of, of the ways of the Spirit. He came to a point where everything of God became Him. How much of God do you think you know, my friends? How much of God? Lack of spiritual growth will make you a casualty to the kingdom of darkness. It's lack of spiritual growth that makes many of us we fight like Suya. So they, they, will, they will program that they will kill this one by next year. They will kill this one by next two months. They will, and you will keep dying like that. Anytime you grow spiritually, you come to a point where anytime they call your name, things scatter. If anybody take your name to Baba, Baba say, please leave this one, this one, don't leave this one. This is a bad market, bad market. Many of you charm walk on you, charm. Somebody put a charm as you just jump it, suddenly your legs swell up. What as you drop it, the charm should disappear. Or the person that put the charm should begin to have problems because now somebody has matched it. But the thing is working against you what? because the person has more rank than you. The lady called me that somebody put something in her door and she cannot go out. I said, God! What do you mean you cannot go out? Go out! If you are afraid of dying, you will die, my friend. You better learn how to conquer death right now. If you have not died, I told you, part of the way to grow spiritual, you must die best. If not, everything that will come against you not to grow is what will come to kill you. But if you die, you will continue to grow in life. I get what I'm saying now. Yes. If you are not dead, you will be afraid of dying. But if you are dead, you can't be afraid of dying. Because dead men cannot die. They are long time dead. Ah. I get what I'm saying now. Ah. When a man dies and is living again, you don't tell him to die again. Spiritual growth is very important. Very, very important. Now, how do you grow spiritually? There are parameters of spiritual growth. So many of them that check me to see whether you have grown. But there are a few ingredients of spiritual growth. Two things that you continue to do for you to grow spiritually. And these things are basic. Do you know that? What do you do to grow physically? What do you do? There are not too many things to do to grow spiritually, physically. 
You don't continue to eat as you drink, that's all. Whether you don't have to go to anywhere, just remain in your house, eat and drink, you keep going. But mind you, physical growth is irreversible. Spiritual growth is reversible. Anytime a man grows physically, you, cannot, you, see, you can never become like this girl again. Yeah. You can never, it's impossible. But do you know that you can, in the realm of the spirit, you can go down and return back, I assure you. Because according to the order of God, growth in the spirit is always reversible. So there are many people that are actually major general in the spirit, but now today they are recruit. They are even trying to be employed again in the army of God. It's simply because they have neglected the pathway of light and now they are fraternized with darkness. And the devil doesn't even want to approve of them again. There must be a level of hunger and desperation if you want to grow spiritually. You must continually to feed upon the Christ on a daily basis. You must remain consistent. Anytime you appear before the presence of God, you must know that there is something that portion unto you. Every day, no man, no man ever gets tired of eating food. It's a natural tendency of a man to eat. When you don't begin to eat, you take it to hospitals. Now, if hospital cannot help you, you will die. It's not a matter of time. Spirit eat, angels eat, God eat. When Jesus Christ was arrested, what did he do? When he came back to meet them, he said, Don't you guys have fish and bread? That's said that they eat in heaven. There are food in heaven, my friends. We survive by eating every day. And the reason why we eat is so that we can grow. But there's a mechanism where man can grow. The Bible says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. I will speak about the trees in the Garden of Eden. That is that tree have the ability to educate, to make a man grow. When you eat carnal food, natural food, you grow naturally. When you eat spiritual food, you grow spiritually. One of the reasons why you have to fast is simply because you are supposed to disconnect yourself from eating natural food so that you can what? Eat spiritual food. But by the time you begin to fast and pray and you don't eat in the spirit, you are doing what I call hunger strike. <laughs> they are not different from people from IDP camp, people who are in Boko Haram camp that there is no food to eat. They are not going spiritually. What they are doing is strike. There is a meat that is meat indeed. There is a communion that goes in the spirit. When you don't partake of that, you can't know spiritually. No, you can't. Anytime you disconnect yourself from the physical things so that you can connect yourself to spiritual things and grow. And one of the requirements is to eat of the body of Jesus Christ and to drink of his own blood. So anytime you pray and you fast as part of the requirement, part of the ingredient for spiritual growth. Fasting and prayer, they are good. But they are not just things you do physically. No. You are supposed to pray. As you pray, you join into a realm in the spirit. Where you begin to intercourse with the spirit of life. And you begin to feed upon him and you grow. The same thing when you study. The idea is not to gather knowledge in your head. No. Your study is supposed to bring you to a point where you join in from the written writings of the book. To the things that are not written in the book. In the book is written Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But by the time you begin to study in the spirit, you collide and encounter Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now you are eating of the personality written in the bodies of the books. Part of the required ingredient, prayer is there. It helps you as a transporter to take you to the Zion of God. Fasting is there. It helps you to starve yourself of natural habitat of eating so that you can eat spiritual food. God Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So by when a man fast, what he wants to do is to shift the protocol of his physical eating to connect to every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. How that he can only survive by what the Lord speaks to him at the moment. He said, the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Food is referred to as life. When you eat food, you have life. But you know the Bible said that there's another mechanism of how a man can survive. Fasting helps you to start yourself of natural eating so that you can eat. That's why when you fast very well, sometimes you find yourself you doze for just like two minutes and you wake up and you are filled. You can be so hungry, but you don't doze, man, wake up and you are satisfied. I assure you, I don't know about you. Maybe you have not engaged in the realm of fasting. I have fasted one time until tears was coming out of my eye. I was so hungry. My stomach was turning me. So I would blast some tongues. I immediately when I'm done, the tears will drop again. I say I will not eat. Then I decide to close my eyes. As I close my eyes, I wake up and I'm strong. 
When a man truly fasts, he disconnects himself from spiritual eating and he connects his breath in the spirit. Let me tell you something. I have met a malam before. They told me there is a level for you to become one in malam that they will lock you inside a room. They won't give you food for many days. Spirit will come and will give me food there. You don't be in the room and you wake up and you see food and you eat. No man give you the food. The same thing with occultic people. There are times you remain inside. You will not die. You will partake of a food served by spirit. So in the realm of the spirit, you can dream and see yourself eating coconut, see yourself eating chicken, see yourself. No, it's not physical. It's a spiritual meal. Just that like your mind trying to interpret it with what you know. I get what I'm saying. That's how it works. The Bible says the earth manna. Manna. It's a spiritual meal. What is this? It's very, very important. By the time you begin to eat spiritually, you begin to grow spiritually. Your spiritual goal is a sum total of the things that you partake of. Very, very important. I don't know about you. I realized many long time ago that I can grow every day spiritually. You don't have to wait for 15 years to grow. In spiritual growth, you can grow instantaneously. It can be sudden. And with that, I know you don't have mates in the spirit. No. You can see me today like this. Tomorrow I've changed. I go every day. Because I knew that my advantage is how much more I'm aligned and compliance with the spirit of truth. I told you spiritual code is some total of your alignment to Christ. And how much more of himself is downloaded inside of you. But you remain consistently within you grow spiritually. As such, you can always switch around. 